in this lesson on how to use the null factor law in quadratics. This is the null factor law and all it is is a times b is equal to zero. So if or really the whole thing, the whole law is that if a times b equals zero, then either a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero or they're both equal to zero. So if a was equal to zero, this would be zero times b, which would equal zero. If b was equal to zero, it would be a times zero, which would equal zero. And if they were both equal to zero, zero times zero would equal zero. So just writing those, so a is equal to zero and b or b is equal to zero, or a equals b equals zero. So it's possible that both of them can be zero in the actual null factor law. Like if you had just two letters like this, it would mean that these three could be possible answers, either A or B is zero, or they're both zero. But in quadratics, you only have the A equals zero or B equals zero part. So looking at the second example, X bracket X minus one, so X times by X minus one is equal to zero. So using the null factor law, you would say x is equal to zero or x minus one is equal to zero. And you've got the answer for this one here. So x is equal to zero. And from here, you just need to solve that. So adding one to both sides of the equation, you end up with x equals one. And so the answer to this would be x equals zero or x equals one. And why do those answers make this true? Well, if you let x equals zero, you would have zero times by zero minus one, which is minus one. So you would have zero times minus one, which would equal zero. And if you had x equals one and you sub that in, you would get one bracket one minus one. So that would be one times zero, which also equals zero. So the answers that you get for x should make this zero and you can always check them. And if they don't make it equal to zero, then it means you've made a mistake in solving the equation or solving for the value of x from the first step that you get. Example three, two brackets this time, x plus one bracket x minus three or x plus one times by x minus three. So again, you just let the first bracket equal zero and you let the second bracket equal zero and you end up with that. So x plus one equals zero or x minus three is zero. Solving this by minusing one from both sides, you end up with x equals minus one or, and then adding three to both sides here, you end up with x equals three. So the answer to this one is x is equal to minus one or x equals three. So example four, this time a cubic function and there's a number out the front this number out the front sometimes confuses students. So the number two always equals the number two. So this part is never going to equal zero, even though it's multiplying all of these and it equals zero. It means that any one of these three brackets equals zero. So you wouldn't go two equals zero. You just start with the brackets and basically ignore that two. So again, either X plus one is zero or X minus one is zero or X plus five is zero. And then solving each of these, minusing one from both sides here, you end up with x equals zero minus one, which is minus one. Adding one to both sides here, you end up with x equals positive one. And minusing five from both sides there, you end up with minus five. So x is equal to either minus one or one or minus five. Now, all you're really doing when you are using the null factor law to solve equations like these, you're just finding the x-intercepts of that particular function or equation. Not this one, but y is equal to two bracket, 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 and y is equal to x plus one in brackets times x minus three. And by letting it, letting it equal zero, this is really just a y value. So you're letting y equal zero, and that's how you find the x-intercepts. So the null factor law is just a way of getting the x-intercepts from the equation of a quadratic or cubic or quartic once it's in factorized form. And it's just an easy way of getting it from the factorized form of those uh, types of functions. And that's all you're really doing. So you need to know how to use the null factor law for when you are trying to find the x-intercepts, particularly when it's in factorized form. If it's not in factorized form, one of the first steps you're going to be doing is factorizing it into brackets so you can find the x-intercepts. That is usually the way of doing it. 
but that's in another lesson. So that's about it for this.